Oh. Yeah. Hey, the town tonight. Yeah. Hey, the town tonight. We'll come on, girl, and don't miss low. I got money in my pocket and it's burning a hole. It's alright. Edward's Day Out Once upon a time, there was a little engine called Edward. He lived in a shed with five other engines. They were all bigger than Edward and boasted about it. They said, The driver won't choose you again. He wants big, strong engines like us. Edward hadn't been out for a long time and he began to feel sad. Just then, the driver and fireman came along to start work. The driver looked at Edward and said, What's the matter? Are you feeling sad? Hmm? Would you like to come out today? Hmm? And Edward said, Oh, yes, please. So the fireman lit the fire and made a nice lot of steam. Then the driver pulled the lever and Edward puffed away. And he blew his whistle. Look at me. 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 The other engines were very cross at being left behind. Edward and Gordon. One of the engines in Edward's shed was called Gordon. He was very big and very proud. You watch me this afternoon, little Edward. When I rush through with the express, that'll be a splendid sight for you. Just then, his driver pulled the lever. Goodbye, little Edward. Look out for me this afternoon. Goodbye, little Edward. The Sad Story of Henry Once an engine attached to a train was afraid of a few drops of rain. It went into a tunnel and squeaked through its funnel and never came out again. The engine's name was Henry. His driver and fireman argued with him, but he wouldn't move. He said, No, no, I shan't come out till there. The rain will spoil my lovely green paint with red stripes. No! The guard blew his whistle till he had no more breath and waved his flags till his arms ached. But Henry stayed in the tunnel and blew steam at him. Go away! Go away! Edward, Gordon and Henry. Um, Henry, uh, will you help pull this train? And Henry was delighted. Oh, yes, uh, certainly. Uh, only do please. So Gordon's driver and fireman lit his fire. Some plate layers broke down the wall and put back the rails. And when he had steam up, Henry puffed out. He was dirty. His boiler was black and he was covered with cobwebs. Oh, shh. Oh, shh. I'm so stiff. Shh. I'm so stiff. Shh. You'd better have a run and ease your joints and find a turntable. 
Henry came back feeling much better, and they put him in front. Edward said, "I'm ready." So am I. Pull hard. Pull hard. We'll do it. We'll do it. Pull hard. We'll do it. The heavy coaches jerked and began to move slowly at first, then faster and faster. Thomas and Gordon. Thomas was a tank engine who lived at a big station. He had six small wheels, a short stumpy funnel, a short stumpy boiler, and a short stumpy dome. He was a fussy little engine, always pulling coaches about. He pulled them to the station, ready for the big engines to take out on long journeys. And when trains came in and the people had got out. He would pull the empty coaches away so that the big engines could go and rest. He was cheeky too. He used to play tricks on the other engines. He liked to come quietly beside them and make them jump. One day, Gordon was resting on a siding. He was very tired. The big express had been late. He was just going to sleep. When Thomas came up, in his cheeky way, <laughs> wake up, lazy bones! <laughs> Do some hard work for a change. You can't catch me. <laughs> And he ran off laughing. Instead of going to sleep again, Gordon thought how he could pay Thomas out. Thomas's train. Thomas often grumbled because he was not allowed to pull passenger trains. The other engines laughed. <laughs> you are too impatient, Thomas. You'd be sure to leave something behind. <laughs> This annoyed Thomas. Rubbish! You just wait. I'll show you. One night, he and Henry were alone. Henry was ill. The men worked hard on him, but he didn't get better. Now Henry usually pulled the first train in the morning, and Thomas had to get his coaches ready. And Thomas thought to himself, "Now, if Henry is ill, perhaps I shall pull his train." And Thomas ran off and found the coaches. <laughs> come along, come along. The coaches were very grumpy. There's plenty of time. There's plenty of time. Thomas and the trucks. Now trucks are silly and noisy. They talk a lot and don't attend to what they're doing. They don't listen to their engine, and when he stops, they bump into each other, screaming, "Oh, oh, oh, oh!" Oh 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 oh! Whatever is happening? And I'm sorry to say, they play tricks on an engine who's not used to them. Edward knew all about trucks, and he warned Thomas to be careful. But Thomas was too excited to listen. The shunter fastened the coupling, and the signal dropped. Thomas was ready. The guard blew his whistle. Thomas answered, and started off. But the trucks weren't ready. Oh, 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 oh! Wait, Thomas, wait! But Thomas wouldn't wait. Come on, come on! And the trucks grumbled slowly out of the siding onto the main line. Thomas and the breakdown train. One day, Thomas heard an engine whistling. <coughs> help! Help! And a goods train came rushing through very fast. <coughs> help! Help! The engine, a new one called James, was frightened. 
His brake blocks were on fire, and smoke and sparks streamed out on each side. They're pushing me! They're pushing me! Those silly trucks are pushing me! And the trucks just laughed. Ha ha! Ha ha! Ha ha! Ha ha! Poor James disappeared under the bridge, whistling for help. Thomas the tank engine didn't know what to do. Oh, I'd like to teach those trucks a lesson. James and the top hat. James was a new engine who lived at a station at the other end of the line. He had two small wheels in front and six driving wheels behind. They weren't as big as Gordon's and they weren't as small as Thomas's. The fat controller told him, you're a special mixed traffic engine. You'll be able to pull coaches or trucks quite easily. But trucks are not easy things to manage. And on his first day, they'd push James down a hill into a field. He'd been ill after the accident, but now he had new brakes and a shining coat of red paint. The fat controller was quite kind to James. The red paint will cheer you up after your accident. You can pull coaches today, and Edward can help you. James and the bootlace. Next morning, the fat controller spoke severely to James. If you can't behave, I shall take away your red coat and have you painted blue. So there. James didn't like that at all, and he was very rough with the coaches as he brought them to the platform. Oh, come along, shh! Come along, shh, shh. And the coaches grumbled, all in good time, all in good time. Oh, stop grumbling and come on. And James snorted into the station with the coaches grumbling after him. James was cross that morning. Gordon never fetches his own coaches, and he's only painted blue. Where a splendid red engine like me should never have to fetch his own coaches. Troublesome trucks. Oh, no, no, oh, 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 oh. We want a proper engine, not a red monster. No, 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 um, oh. But James backed onto them and started as soon as the guard was ready. At last, they saw Gordon's hill ahead. James's driver said, Now, look out for trouble, James. We'll go fast and get them up before they know it. Now, don't let them stop you. So James went faster, and they were soon halfway up the hill. I'm doing it. I'm doing it. I'm doing it. I'm doing it. Oh, but it was hard work. Then suddenly there was a jerk, and James got to the top easily. I've done it! I've done it! I've done it! I've done it! Hurrah! It's easy now! James and the Express Sometimes Gordon and Henry slept in James's shed, and sometimes they talked of nothing but bootlaces. James tried to talk about engines who got shut up in tunnels and stuck on hills, but they wouldn't listen and went on talking and laughing. Gordon would say, You talk too much, little James. Now, a fine, strong engine like me has something to talk about. I'm the only engine who can pull the express. When I'm not there, they need two engines. Think of that. I've pulled expresses for years and years and never once lost my way. I seem to know the right line by instinct. Now, 
Every wise engine knows, of course, that it's the signalman who works the points to make engines run on the right lines. But Gordon was so proud that he'd forgotten. Thomas and the Guard Thomas the tank engine is very proud of his branch line. He thinks it's the most important part of the whole railway. He has two coaches. They're old and need new paint, but he loves them very much. He calls them Annie and Clarabelle. Annie can only take passengers, but Clarabelle can take passengers, luggage and the guard. As they run backwards and forwards along the line, Thomas sings them little songs and Annie and Clarabelle sing too. When Thomas starts from a station, he sings, shh, 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 oh, come along, shh, 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 we're rather late, shh, 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 oh, come along, shh, 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 we're rather late, shh, 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 oh, come along, shh, 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 we're rather late, shh, 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 oh, come along, shh, shh, shh. And the coaches sing, we're coming along, we're coming along. We're coming along, we're coming along. Thomas goes fishing. Thomas's branch line has a station by a river. As he rumbles over the bridge, he often sees people fishing. Sometimes they stand quietly by their lines. Sometimes they actually jerk fish out of the water. Thomas often wanted to stay and watch. But his driver said, no, Thomas, what would the fat controller say if we were late, hmm? Thomas thought it would be lovely to stop by the river. I should like to go fishing. Every time he met another engine, he would say, I should like to go fishing. They all answered, ha, engines don't go fishing, sure. But that made Thomas impatient, and he would say, ah, silly stick in the muds. Thomas, Terence, and the snow. Autumn was changing the leaves from green to brown. The fields were changing too, from yellow stubble to brown earth. As Thomas puffed along, he heard a tractor at work. Pick it a pocket, 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 pick it a pocket. One day, stopping for a signal, he saw the tractor close by. The tractor looked over the fence at Thomas and said, "Pick it a pocket, pick 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 it a pocket, pop." Hello, I'm Terence. I'm plowing. I'm Thomas. I'm pulling a train. Oh, what ugly wheels you've got. They're not ugly. They're caterpillar tracks. I can go anywhere with my tracks. I don't need rails. I don't want to go anywhere. I like my rails, thank you. And off went Thomas. Thomas and Bertie. One day, Thomas was waiting at the junction when a bus came into the yard. Thomas said to the bus, Hello, who are you? What's that? Oh, I'm Bertie. Uh, who are you? I'm Thomas. I run this line. Oh, so you're Thomas, are you? Oh, yes. I remember now. You were stuck in the snow, didn't you? I took your passengers and Terence pulled you out, didn't he? Well, I've come to help you with your passengers today. This made Thomas very cross indeed, and he let off steam. Psh, help me! Psh, help me! Psh, oh, wow! I can go faster than you! <laughs> you can't. I can! You can't. I can! All right, I'll race you. The drivers agreed. The station master said, Right, are you ready? Steady. Go! And they were off. 
Thomas never could go fast at first, and Bertie drew in front. Henry and the Elephant One morning, Henry was told to take some workmen to a tunnel, which was blocked. He grumbled away and found two trucks to carry the workmen and their tools. And he pushed the trucks along the line and muttered to himself, Pushing trucks, pushing trucks, pushing trucks, pushing trucks. They came to the tunnel and stopped outside. They tried to look through it, but it was quite dark. No daylight shone from the other end. The workmen took their tools and went inside. Suddenly, they all shouted, Oh! 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 <laughs> and they came running out of the tunnel. The foreman was outside the tunnel, having a cup of tea. And they said to him, Look, we went to the blockage and started to dig it away, but it grunted and moved. Tenders and turntables. The big stations at both ends of the line each have a turntable. The fat controller had them made so that Edward, Henry, Gordon and James can be turned round. It is dangerous for tender engines to go fast backwards. Tank engines like Thomas don't need turntables. They can go just as well backwards as forwards. But if you heard Gordon talking a short while ago, you would have thought that the fat controller had given him a tender just to show how important he was. He said to Thomas, Oh, but you don't understand, little Thomas. We tender engines have a position to keep up. It doesn't matter where you go, but we are important. And for the fat controller to make a shunt on dirty sidings, well, it's, it's, it's not the proper thing. Trouble in the Shed the fat controller sat in his office and listened. The fat controller frowned and said, Oh, what a nuisance passengers are. How can I possibly work with all this noise? Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Yes, what is it? It was the station master, looking very worried. Eh, there's trouble in the shed, sir. Henry is sulking. There is no train. And the passengers are saying that this is a bad railway. Uh -huh. Indeed, really. We cannot allow that. Now, will you quieten the passengers, please? And I will go and speak to Henry. The fat controller found Henry, Gordon and James looking sulky. Now, come along, Henry. It's time your train was ready. But Henry wouldn't answer. It was Gordon who said, uh, Henry's not going, so there, and neither are James or I. We won't shunt like common tank engines. We are important tender engines, if you don't mind. You fetch our coaches for us, and we'll pull them. But we won't shunt. Tender engines don't shunt, so there. Percy runs away. Edward had warned Percy, Look, be careful, Percy, of the main line. Whistle to tell the signalman that you're there. But Percy didn't remember to whistle, and the signalman was so busy, he forgot Percy. Bells rang in the signal box. The man answered, saying the line was clear, and set the signals for the next train. Percy waited and waited. The points were still against him. He looked along the main line and saw something that made him go <whistles> for rushing straight towards him was Gordon with the express. Gordon went <whistles> 
His driver shut off steam and applied the brakes. Percy's driver turned on full steam. Back, Percy, back! But Percy's wheels wouldn't turn quickly. Gordon was coming so fast that it seemed he couldn't stop. Percy just shut his eyes and waited for the crash. His driver and fireman jumped out. Gordon yelled, Oh, oh, get out of my way, get out of my way, oh! Henry's Special Coal Henry was feeling very sorry for himself. He said to James, You know, James, I suffer dreadfully, and no one cares. James said, Oh, rubbish, Henry. You don't work hard enough. Henry was bigger than James, but smaller than Gordon. Sometimes he could pull trains very well, but sometimes he had no strength at all. The fat controller spoke to him. You're too expensive, Henry. You've had lots of new parts and new paint too, but they've done you no good. If we can't make you better, well, we must get another engine instead of you. <laughs> Sorry. The Flying Kipper a goods train waited in the siding to let the flying kipper pass. The driver and the fireman were drinking cocoa in the brake van. The guard pulled out his watch and he said, Hmm, you know, the flying kipper is due. The fireman said, Who cares about the flying kipper? This is good cocoa. The driver got up and said, Eh, hey, come on, fireman, back to our engine. But I haven't finished my cocoa yet. Then suddenly there was a terrible crash. The brake van broke, the three men shot in the air like jacks in the box and landed in the snow outside. Henry's driver and fireman jumped clear before the crash. The fireman fell head first into a heap of snow and he kicked his legs about so much the driver couldn't pull him out. Gordon's Whistle Gordon was cross, very cross. Why should that Henry have a new shape? A shape good enough for me is good enough for him, surely. He goes gallivanting off to crew, leaving us to do his work. Oh, it's disgraceful, it really is. It's disgraceful. It's not good enough. And there's another thing. Henry whistles too much. No respectable engine ever whistles loudly at stations. It's not that it's wrong to whistle at stations, but we just don't do it. We just don't do it. Everybody got that? Henry's Sneeze One lovely Saturday morning, Henry was puffing along. <laughs> the sun shone, the fields were green, the birds sang. Henry had plenty of steam in his boiler and he was feeling happy. <laughs> I feel so well, I feel so well, I feel so well, I feel so well. Just ahead, Henry saw some boys on a bridge, and he thought he would whistle to them and say, Hello. Hello, boys. Hello. <laughs> Hello, boys. <laughs> Hello, boys. Ooh, ooh, ooh. That hurt. Yes, it did hurt. For the boys didn't wave back at Henry and say hello. No, they dropped stones on him instead. 
Toby and the Stout Gentleman. Toby is a tram engine. He is short and sturdy. He has cow catchers and side plates, and he doesn't look like a steam engine at all. He takes trucks from farms and factories to the main line, and the big engines take them to London and elsewhere. His tram line runs along roads and through fields and villages. Toby rings his bell cheerfully to everyone he meets. He has a coach called Henrietta, who has seen better days. She complains because she has few passengers. Toby is attached to Henrietta and always takes her with him, as he says. Well, you never know. She might come in useful one day. Thomas in trouble. There is a line to a quarry at the end of Thomas's branch. It goes for some distance along the road. Thomas was always very careful here. One morning, there was no one on the road, but a large policeman was sitting on the grass. Close to the line, he was shaking a stone from his boot. Thomas liked policemen. He had been a great friend of the constable who used to live in the village, but had just retired. Thomas expected that the new constable would be friendly too, and he called out to him. <laughs> good morning. Good morning. Good morning. The policeman jumped and dropped his boot. He scrambled up and hopped round on one leg till he was facing Thomas. Thomas was sorry to see that he didn't look friendly at all. He was red in the face and very cross, and he was wobbling about trying to keep his balance. Dirty object. At the end of the line, James left his coaches and got ready for his next train. It was a slow goods, stopping at every station to pick up and set down trucks. James hated slow goods trains. Uh, dirty trucks from dirty sidings. Uh, I hate them. I hate them. I do. There you are. Starting with only a few trucks, he picked up more and more trucks at each station till he had a long train. At first, the trucks behaved well, but James bumped them so crossly that they determined to pay him out. Presently, rumbling over the viaduct, they approached the top of Gordon's Hill. Heavy goods trains halt here to pin down their brakes. James had had an accident with trucks before, and should have remembered this. Mrs. Kindly's Christmas. It was nearly Christmas. Annie and Clarabel were packed full of people and parcels. Thomas was having very hard work pulling them. Come on! Come on! Come on! Come on! The coaches grumbled, and were feeling so full. We're feeling so full. We're feeling so full. We're feeling so full. Thomas looked at the hill ahead. Can I do it? Can I do it? Can I do it? Can I do it? Suddenly, he saw a handkerchief waving from a cottage window. He felt better at once. Yes, I can. Oh, yes, I can. Oh, yes, I can. Shh. Oh, yes, I can. Off the rails. Gordon was resting in a siding when Henry came by and said, "Hello, fat face." <laughs> Hello, fat face. Gordon was furious. What cheek! 
What cheek? That Henry is too big for his wheels. Fancy speaking to me like that. To me. To me, who has never had an accident. Never, ever had an accident. Percy was a bit puzzled. Oh, but Gordon, aren't jammed whistles and burnt safety valves accidents? No, indeed, they are not accidents. Not accidents. They're, well, they're just I spirits. I mean, it might happen to any engine. But to come off the rails, well, I ask you, is it right? Is it decent, hmm? Autumn leaves. Two men were cleaning Gordon. Gordon didn't like it. My, my eye. My, my eye. You've got your holes in my eye. Oh, stop it. Oh, shut up, silly. Shut up. Here, Bert, did you ever see such mud? No, Alf, I never did. You ought to be ashamed, Gordon, giving us extra work like this. The hosing and the scrubbing stopped. Gordon opened one eye, but shut it quickly. The fat controller came along. Now, uh, wake up, Gordon, and listen to me, will you? <clears throat> now, look, you will pull no more coaches until you are a really useful engine. Understand that? A really useful engine. So, there. Down the mine. Long ago, miners digging for lead had made tunnels under the ground. Though strong enough to hold up trucks, their roofs could not bear the weight of engines. A large notice said, Danger! Engines must not pass this board. Thomas had often been warned, but he didn't care. He'd often tried to pass the board, but he'd never succeeded, and he always used to say, Ha! Silly old board! Silly old board! This morning, he laughed as he puffed along, and he made a plan. He had to push empty trucks into one siding and pull out full ones from another. His driver stopped him, and the fireman went to turn the points. The fireman waved. Come on! Come on! And then Thomas started. Paint pots and queens. The queen was met by the fat controller and before doing anything else she thanked him for their splendid run. The fat controller bowed and said, Not at all, your majesty. Thank you. And then the queen said to the fat controller, We have read a great deal about your engines. May we see them, please? So he led the way to where all the engines were waiting. Toby and Percy said, They're coming! They're coming! Henry and James said, Shh! But Toby and Percy were too excited to care. The fat controller told the Queen their names and she talked to each engine. Then, as she turned to go, Percy bubbled over. Oh, I say, three cheers for the Queen. Hip hip! <whistles> hip hip! <whistles> hip hip! <whistles> the fat controller held his ears, but the Queen, smiling, waved to the engines till she passed the gate. Next day, the Queen spoke specially to Thomas, who fetched the coaches, and to Edward and Gordon, who took her away, and no engines ever felt prouder than Thomas and Edward and Gordon, the big engine.